This is Josh Sawyer, Design Director from Obsidian Entertainment and Game Director on Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I think the idea originated from the basic concept of where the game takes place, which is the Deadfire Archipelago. We knew that we were going to move the game to a place with a huge island chain, which naturally sort of raised the question of, well, how are you moving around uh, this island chain? In Pillars of Eternity and the Infinity Engine games, you typically were traveling overland from icon to icon. Uh, we knew we wanted to place an increased emphasis also on overland exploration, and we figured the best place to do that would be on the world map, and that's sort of the outgrowth of where the ship system came from fundamentally. So we are essentially using our ship system as a replacement for our stronghold system. Uh, in Pillars 1, we have the stronghold. In Pillars 2, really think of the ship as your stronghold. Uh, we know that people really like the ability to customize these features, whether it's a stronghold or a ship. So we give the player a number of different options in terms of what ships they can actually use. If you want to use the starter ship, the Defiant, throughout the entire game, you can do that. You have the ability to rename the Defiant. You can also find a number of other ships from Galleons and Dows to Juana Voyagers. They each have their own look and properties, and you can upgrade their cannons, their sails, um, all sorts of little bits and bobs all over the ships. And then most importantly, you have the full crew that you can customize. So there are lots of different NPCs you can find around the world to hire on as crew members. They each have their own personalities and skill sets as far as working on the ship goes, and it really opens up a huge amount of customization for the player. So we want exploration to be a big focus of how you explore the world. Uh, with that comes a lot of risk. So um, people tell you early on, hey, these are kind of the safe areas to go. If you go outside of there, danger is lurking. You can find enemy ships that are very hostile and very powerful. You can find monsters that will encounter you and attack you on your ship. And you can also find unexplored islands, and those offer some of the potentially most interesting things because you can disembark from your ship, go exploring, find a dungeon, and those things can be very simple and easy to go through or they can be incredibly challenging. So there's a really a wide range of content. Uh, we do want the world to feel very dangerous but also very rewarding for the people who want to go out and, and tackle it. We thought about a number of different ways to approach ship combat. The one we settled on was based on our desire to have it be a deep system where you had a, a big connection to your crew and your ship members. Um, and that kind of demanded that we go with something that was turn-based. And we looked at games like Faster Than Light, or FTL, I should say, and a number of other games that took a more abstracted view of how ships sort of interrelated to each other. And that was the foundation of it. We, we wanted the player to be able to take their time to plan their individual moves. We wanted them to feel most importantly like a ship captain where they were giving orders to their crew uh, and then to really care about their individual crew members over the course of a fight. So it's a system that starts out being relatively simple. Um, some people have likened it to chess um, where you're making these individual tactical moves and then as the game goes on and the combats become more difficult, new elements open up within the combat where you as the captain have to make very difficult choices about what you want to do from turn to turn. So in Pillars 1, we found that there were a number of limitations to the way our AI worked. There were limitations both on the design side, meaning that our enemies couldn't be as smart as we wanted them to be, and also when players were trying to customize their own AI, they often got frustrated by the limitations of the system. So for Deadfire, we completely rewrote the entire AI system. That has allowed us to do a couple of things. One is that our enemy AI can be much, much more challenging. Don't worry though, if you want to play on a lower level of difficulty, we actually tune down the AI so it's not quite so vicious. But the benefit of it is that from a player perspective, if you want to really customize your character's AI, you can go really, really crazy with it. Um, to begin with, all characters have pretty good and robust AI packages that you can use as default. So if you don't want to dive into super customizing it, you have a lot of options there. And then if you really want to get in depth, if you really like the stuff like the Final Fantasy Gambit system or the AI settings from Dragon Age Origins, those are the games that we used as an inspiration for Deadfire's AI. And we have great in-depth options. You can do some really wild and crazy stuff with that, and I hope people enjoy it.
In Pillars 1, you started with the 11 base classes, and that allowed for quite a bit of customization within the individual character trees, uh, also the different races you could take. For Deadfire, we wanted to open it up a lot more. We wanted to offer subclasses, so each class has about three to five subclasses. And then multi-classing, you can combine any two combination of, of classes. So when you combine the subclasses with the multi-classes, you have this incredible array of characters that you can make. Um, we're running our backer beta right now, and people are making all sorts of crazy characters. Um, what's great about our backers is that uh, they dive really deep into the systems. So they show us all the ways that those systems break, um, but people are having a lot of fun with it. Uh, the reason we wanted to offer it is we really wanted people to make the biggest variety of characters that they could dream of. So if you want to make a rogue paladin or a druid ranger or any sort of combination you could come up with, you have the ability to do that. And so that it's, it's been a lot of fun coming up with that stuff and then also seeing all the backer feedback and trying to tune things to, to get it in a healthy place. There are two le levels to the reactivity that we have in Deadfire. The first is we went through all of the choices that you made in Pillars 1 to see how that would impact Deadfire. Um, so if you come straight into Deadfire from Pillars 1, you can import your save directly and we have a lot of reactivity to that. We also um, allow people who are fresh to it to pick from presets. If you have no idea what this game is about, you can sort of pick a preset, a uh, set of, of gameplay variables to go into the game with. And if you're the, the, the person who really wants to get a very specific ending out, but you didn't have a chance to finish Pillars 1 or you want to change something, we also allow you to edit that. We have a lot of reactivity throughout the game, both in the early game and the late game. Uh, some of it comes up in very surprising places. Um, people have been very surprised at some of the things that pop up, which is great. And then in terms of the in-game reactivity, we have an increased emphasis on companion relationships and also faction relationships. So your companions are much more reactive to the things that not only you do, but other companions do. They can get upset with each other, they can get into arguments, they can actually form very strong bonds, including romance with each other or with the player. Um, unlike in the, in the base game, companions can actually get fed up with you and leave <laughs> um, if you're too antagonistic towards them. And uh, the factions are much more tightly integrated into our storyline. So in Pillars 1, people found that even if they enjoyed the factions, after the second act, they kind of dropped off. So in Deadfire, we made the factions a much stronger uh, emphasis of the game and the gameplay, and they're really integral to how you go through the main storyline. With regard to combat, we really looked at trying to clean up and clarify combat. Uh, we didn't really want to simplify it because part of the reason why people play these games is because they like the deep tactical combat. But that being said, there were still some parts of the gameplay systems that were hard to understand just fundamentally. The affliction system was very confusing. The stacking rules were very confusing. Uh, you had a lot of combatants in the fight at, a, at the same time, and the visual effects could be really overpowering. So with Deadfire, we changed how we render a lot of the visual effects. We actually allow those to dim down when you pause the game so you can see what the hell is going on. Um, we've slowed the pace of combat down to make things easier to process and understand. And we've also slightly reduced the party size just so the player is able to more easily keep track of everyone involved in combat. The goal was really to provide actually an increased level of tactical depth, which I think we've achieved, um, while making it easier to understand. Because you, if you have a tactically deep game that's hard to understand, it's, it's pretty hard to have fun with it. Well, they allowed us to look at um, some aspects that we didn't in the first game in terms of not only the look and feel of the place, but also to deal with new themes that we didn't necessarily deal with. In Pillars 1, there was sort of a colonial and imperial theme, uh, but it's much more pronounced in the Deadfire because it's at the time when there's active colonization going on and a lot of friction that comes up with that. So the native uh, Juana population of the Deadfire is really trying to deal with all these other people coming in and staking a claim to the natural resources of the Deadfire and the various tensions and, and physical violent conflicts that come up from that. So we've been able to explore um, a lot of these things that normally don't really come up within the context of a Western RPG, typically. That's been a lot of fun. That was intentional. <laughs> 
So uh, I made no no secret about the fact that uh, the first place that you go to in in Pillars of Eternity is very standard fantasy. It's it's sort of Western European. There's forests. There's meadows. There's you know people that seem vaguely maybe kind of English, um, and and that was a very intentional approach because. Uh, a lot of the appeal of Pillars 1 was built on nostalgia and Baldur's Gate, The Forgotten Realms, that is a very standard fantasy uh, setting. And uh, so we wanted people to feel at home when they came to it. And with Deadfire, I mean, just like Bioware did with Baldur's Gate 2, they shifted the focus a little bit. They went with something that was a little less standard. And um, it was kind of always our plan that if if Pillars did well, we said, like, let's take it someplace that's a little more interesting from our perspective that isn't done so much in fantasy. So doing something that feels more like Pacific Islands uh, with a, an ex a emphasis on sea exploration was, was really what people were the most excited about. <laughs> Well, I think an increased uh, move towards transparency, um, clarity of mechanics and combat. Um, I think that the ship system is certainly the most uh, brand new of the systems. Most of the other things that we have in the game have, have been in other Infinity Engine games or Infinity Engine-like games. But I do think that the ship and crew system are the, are the first completely brand new things that aren't just evolutions of stuff that has come before. Um, with the rest of the game, we're really focused on just making this very polished, focused, great experience. By the way, I should say the game is also enormous. Um, <laughs> um, but the ship system, I think, is the first thing that we've had that really is is trying to say, hey, what if, like, this is something that feels like it really logically fits in a game like this. In the setting, in the story, it really supports it. It feels much more tightly integrated than something like a stronghold does. Uh, so let's try to really make a focus of that. So I'm hopeful that this can be used as a launching point for a lot of other sort of like gameplay elements that, that can fit. Uh, there's a ton of feedback about mechanics, whether it's combat mechanics, the pace of combat, uh, also looking at things like um, individual classes and class balance. Um, and then there's just a lot of stuff about clarity. Um, so like how clear quests are, uh, exploration is, um, how enjoyable is the feeling of exploration. These are all things that we're responding to in terms of their feedback. Uh, thankfully, because we already had a whole game, <laughs> um, I think the overall feedback from our backers was that combat in Deadfire felt much more polished, certainly than the Pillars 1 backer beta. Um, but that, that goes a long way to helping us know that we're on the right track. But um, they're still giving us lots of great feedback about overall balance, ease of use, a lot of the new features like the AI system and the exploration, they're, they're really helpful with that. Really for me, it's the sheer amount of choice that players have. Choice in how they build their characters, how they develop their companions, the relationships that companions have with each other and with you, the way that you can shape them over time, uh, the different faction relationships you can have and then just the sheer amount of exploration that you can do. It's a much more open game. You can approach it in lots of different ways. And I think it is going to be accessible for a wider range of people while still being even more challenging than the first game. So I'm really excited about our audience uh, really just having an incredible amount of freedom in how they play and explore the game. Thank you.